Oh, I fully understand. Now we shall move along to actually you mentioned Apera. As soon as you mentioned it, that's only marginally um marginally milder. So this is the Apera 087. Sorry for uh, putting my emphasis on the wrong syllable. Let's see where this goes. I'm gonna pour some of this as well. Yeah, screw it. We're friends, we can drink together. Why not? So we don't have many of these left. Um, they're, they, um, they've been very popular. This one has a, a medal as well. This one won a double gold medal at San Francisco. And what that means is that every single judge judged it to be of gold medal standard. So it wasn't just uh, one or two people. It was the consensus of everyone that this was um, a very, very special whiskey. It's um, very different from the Silk Road. Very, it, different. very different. Very different. Um... So when I'm drinking my whiskey, for the viewers out there, um, if you roll whiskey around in the glass, you are increasing the surface area from which the whiskey is evaporating. Uh, and so you're harnessing the superpower of the whiskey, which is its volatility chemically. So you'll pick up a lot more of the aroma. And the other thing is if you open your mouth as you smell it, you'll engage all of your olfactory senses in, in, in processing what's going on here. And thank you, Conser, for teaching me how to finally taste whiskey properly. Mm. So this is an example of, of a barrel that is just exceptional. Um, I can have all these, as the cellar march of Amber Lane, I can have all these clever ideas about how I'm going to whiskey around and create layers of flavour, etc. And sometimes a barrel... It just does something very special and it's not me it's the barrel you know and i put my hand up and say this one is a very special barrel so it's it's a <clears throat> 225 liter x mcwilliams sweet sherry barrel <clears throat> the best that i know it's probably the barrel's about 20 years old before we filled it and um the spirit was only about three years old when we recognized just how special it was <coughs> Excuse me. I think I've already caught this bug off you. Uh, yeah. I, I had the um the amphibian in my mm. throat. It always happens. You know, yeah. when you record, um, a kid races through the door saying, Dad, I've just chopped my knee off, or there's always some shit happens. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. It, it's part of the course. We've got yeah. um, two extra people um, in my house. There's the, um, well, we worship goddesses, what the fuck and who the fuck, and then there's somebody and nobody. So it's always... What the fuck just happened? And who the fuck just did it? And then somebody's done it, but nobody's admitting to it. So uh, yeah, I, I get I get the cough. <laughs> yes. uh, yeah. Anyway, so so this one, um, uh, it's it's got a beautiful um, caramel note. It's absolutely ripping with raisins, uh, raisins front and centre. So if you love that traditional sherry cask flavour, the sort of Christmas pudding note, it's got that in spades. Um, sometimes when I'm drinking this, it makes me think of the cinnamon donuts I can pick up at. Um, there's a there's a donut van in Berry, which is a lovely country town um, just south of where I live, and um, love the cinnamon donuts. So it's got a lot of happy associations. This whiskey, fifty four and a half percent, so it's at a strength that is very manageable for people. Um, and one of the things about the way that we produce this whiskey. It's a single cask, but we added some water as it was maturing. And this is one thing that I picked up from the cognac tradition as well. Now, they won't just add water at the end to bottle. If they're going to reduce the ABV of their cognac, now they will be adding water gently from year to year and bringing it down slowly. And part of the benefit of that is integration, but part of it is that the what you draw from the cask will change depending on the strength of the alcohol in the barrel because some things are water soluble and some things are soluble in the alcohol and so if you change the ratio of the water to the alcohol in the barrel you will actually draw different characters from the cask so by us adding some water as this matured we actually drew different elements from the cask and created a more complex whiskey even though we're just harnessing a single cask, if that makes sense. You've mentioned water. Do you get your water from a special sacred spring um, to, 
that only ever you, know, you only ever draw from it from the fifth full moon of the month or or whatever. Exactly. How did you know that? Hey, we, I'm a reviewer. I know things. Yeah, <laughs> the, uh, we use rainwater for our um, for for bringing down the ABV. So we collect rainwater on on the property. So we're in a beautiful uh, country location. Uh, if you were to drive through the Yarramong Valley, you would see horse studs, beautiful, you know, forested hills and things like this and, and green green fields. The the um, distillery itself is situated next to a large paddock where we have um, some cattle, we have some highland cows, some donkeys, uh, and there's a beautiful creek running through the property which brings humidity to our warehouse. And that's an important aspect to our whiskey maturation is that if you have a lot of moisture in the air, so a humid cellaring environment, what will tend to evaporate from the cask more is the alcohol. Mm -hmm. Whereas if I warehouse condition, it will be the it will be the water that evaporates. And so this is relevant because if you have alcohol evaporating from the cask, the ABV will drop uh, and it will become more mellow as it ages. Uh, and that's what happens in Scotland. Scottish dunnages, they're, they're moist environments, they're often on the on the dirt you know there's no hard floor, floor surface um and there's a lot of moisture always in the air so you if you were to buy a 30 year old um barrel from scotland uh the abv it, it would probably have been filled at 63.5 percent abv that's the standard fill strength in scotland it probably would have worked its way down to the low 50s maybe even the high 40s so it could be a 48 percent cask strength whiskey Whereas you will come across Australian whiskies, if you were to buy a whiskey from Heartland, Tin Ducket's business, yeah, you and he, you know, she showcases some great whiskies from whiskey producers around Australia at full cask strength. It's not uncommon to find whiskies that he releases in the high sixties and even occasionally as high as seventy percent ABV. But anyway, right. that I've never heard of him, but um, clearly I'm going to have to track him down and um, badger him mm. for samples and interviews and um, all the great clearly. things. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, anyway, the, the point of the story is that at Amber Lane we have, uh, because of the wet, the the um, the humidity from the creek nearby, we have uh, good humidity in the warehouse. Our, our shed is also cut into the side of the hill and it's completely protected from the western sun. And so um, we find out that our ABV drops. Uh, in the cask as it matures, and it just creates a very lovely, mellow whiskey. Which, as you said, you're managing your, your microclimates to um, affect the chemistry. Yeah, definitely. Okay, it is. Two out of two, I absolutely hate your stuff. 